Do you know that? So, if he, and he's an exception. It, it takes 41 steps for him to run a race. Other 100 meters, 43 and 5. He's putting up 41,000 pounds of work under 10 seconds. Now, if you take one of my big boys, it's quite a thousand. You know, and it'll take him a good 20 minutes, and he would do 12,000 pounds of work. So, which one seems more logical? You know, 41, I mean, it's a bit over, overused. 41,000 pounds in 10 seconds or 12,000 pounds in 20 minutes. You want to get strong, you're going to get stronger with the weights. Cut out most of this running. You know, in this, I mentioned this 5K race and, and dropping by, by 25 seconds. Also recommended in the study is to drop running 35%. Any idiot can run. Once you learn how to run, you can run. You have to get stronger, more powerful. And it, it, it applies to three things. Max effort, um, the speed training, you know, the explosive strength, maximum acceleration, or maximal effort. <clears throat> okay? Um, Luke, could you talk about, I think we talked about it practice this morning, about how you can use max effort year-round, even in the season, because it doesn't damage the CMS like people thought. I think Charlie Francis, you said. Yeah, I want to, yeah, I'm getting into that. Um, you're absolutely right. See, each week we max out. You know, why is this gym so strong? Because we break a record over 90% of the time all year long. Have you ever heard of that? Because every week we switch exercises. We break a rack record, well, pin three will say, this week. We break a low box squat record next Monday. The following Monday, we might pull off a box. Break, you know, stand on two inch box, break a record. The next week, uh, we might be a front squat on a, on a, a high box, break a record. We constantly break records 95% of the time. We put out maximal effort. And it's low volume. You get it? Then you move on to single joint exercises. But see, max effort, you know what shock training is, right? You know, you've heard of shock training as depth jumps. Correct? Shock training is also any max effort exercise. Anything that stimulates the central nervous system, you know, uh, by a large amount. And Bert Fischotti talks about this in super training. He talks about rack work, heavy eccentric, a lot of different things. But everything we do is shock training. We're making, we're, we're putting demands on it. Your body will respond to demands placed upon it. That's the way the body works. I mean, that's why you go to school for a subject. You, you just concentrate on one subject. You know, you do all this science stuff. Now, and I'll give you a map test. See how you do. Not too good. You know, your body responds to the demands placed upon it. So if you do max effort all the time, your body use. Tommy's watched me. I'm older than dirt. Can't lift light weights, but I can still lift heavy weights. My body turns on with big weights. I don't give a freak about little weights. But give me a big weight, I can tear into it. Because that's what I've done all my life since I was 14 years old. So you, I'm, a, I'm a very good example of that existence of, of I'm, I respond. You, I see you back there. You know, you get a fighter, right? And the next thing you know, you, you push him and they're slapping in the face. Because that's a natural response. Am I right? Um, yeah. Why? Because you don't. You're freaking alone. That's right. You almost can't do it. You just got to punch back. Okay, now, are we good so far on these on the weight training so far? Now, okay, we are. Listen, I used to read all these sports books, and uh, Dr. Siff is a good friend of mine, super training, I know you're familiar. I did seminars with Mel because Mel was out there so far that I basically had to tell the audience what he's talking about. And so he, he told me that he wanted to do a study on knees, he wouldn't let him squat. He had to do extensions. Now I read all the time, he does studies on elbow. Not benching or inclining, no, doing elbow extensions. Single joint, and I go, man, what the hell's wrong with these people? You know, they ought to get somebody who's smart enough to know how to lift weights, right, and do it. Well, lo and behold, one day I got to thinking about what I do. Um, only 20% of our training is, is barbell. We never full squat. We squat on boxes all the time. Am I right, Alan? But we put a bench shirt on once a month, right, Al? We never do a regular deadlift off the floor, right, Al? But our top, our top 10 deadlift average is 866. Top five, 890. No one in the world has not even close to that. But what, how do we do this? And is anyone even sore from training? No, because we do single joint exercises. We do, you know, uh, as base close to it. Calf and glute raise, inverse curl for the hamstrings, 
Um, reverse hypers for the low back and the spinal rectors and the glutes. Uh, a, a couple hundred or more tricep extensions a day. We never do less than 200 leg curls of some type a day. We don't pull freaking. How come if people run down the track and we 150 pull a hamstring? Why don't we pull a hamstring squatting 1200? How come we come off of meat? Um, Vogel pull, I watched Chuck Vogel pull one of the worlds in 96. These Germans come to the gym the next day. It was here in Columbus. And they go, they walk in, they go, uh, I see him. I go, what's up, dude? They go, man, who's that back there? I go, that was Chuck Vogelpool. What? He said, didn't he live just eight? He's back here doing heavy good mornings. This is, this is nine o'clock. You know, the meet was over about six Sunday evening. Nine o'clock in the morning, he's doing heavy good morning. So what? That's what GPP, that's what being a level of physical preparedness. Are you prepared? You know, and, and uh, I'll bring up a few things before I get too crazy. In track and field, you got you got a basic and old fashioned, as far as I'm concerned, laws of periodization. Uh, you have the accumulation phase where you go and do all these exercises, right? Then after a, a, you know your period of time, six, eight, ten weeks, you go into intensification. All right. So then you eliminate some, and you start to look more like a ball player, we'll say, you know, or you're going to look like a high jumper. Then you have intensification. Now you're specializing in your events. And then you got a short time at the end of the season to run your best times. Like track people tell you, indoor don't mean nothing. Well, it means a lot to me. What the, what the hell you're racing if it don't mean anything? But what, in my gym, you go through uh, the accumulation phase one time. You would never do it again. Because I'd raise your level of physical preparedness, and you would never, ever detrain after that. And you see what I'm doing that no one's ever done? Uh, I did something that, that no one's ever done. Well, overseas they did. I have a day to build strength and power, right? For us, it's Friday and Saturday for squat and bench. On Monday, it's max effort. I build absolute strength. And throughout the week, we build muscle hypertrophy where we want it. Not waste, waste. We can't gain weight. I mean, I've got a 165 that squats 850 easy. He's, and he's a 48. He's jumped down to break the world record. We can't put 10 pounds of wasted muscle on him. Because... You know what I'm saying? Uh, you want, we're just like track. We want to stay as small as we can, like a fighter or anybody. You know, we're not in this to, you know, to, to look big. We're in this to do good. So that's why that's why this training is set up the way it is. What am I talking about? <laughs> what was I just talking about here? Just the volume? Well, you see where we, like I'll take this gentleman right here. This guy right here, hypothetically, he's got 600 pound squat legs, but he's got a 450 pound lower back. So you do repetition of squat. You know what's going to happen? It'll hurt your lower back. It's just the way it is. So what we do is, I mean, and we recognize, we can recognize this very easy. We come in and say, oh, dude, you got no lower back. And, and, and we analyze, never criticize. It's analyzing. So what we do is, we primarily, the first exercise you do is a ton of reverse hypers for your lower back. We'll bring up to you who don't have a muscle imbalance. Why do people hurt muscles? Muscle imbalances. We don't have muscle imbalances. Because we're constantly working on maintaining um, you know, uh, muscles, uh, the whole body has got to be at the same rate. Like that lower back I said was weak on you and too much, your lower back stronger than your hams. Now we're bringing your hams to catch your lower back. See how this goes? It's a constant switching back and forth of volume. So, in other words, training is like a big pie. You're, if you do the major exercise for the squat and deadlift for power cleans, your first big piece of that pie is going to be lower back training. See, and what if you, the strongest part would be the least that you would do until we balance things out. And that way you, you don't have muscle imbalances. That's why we don't have injuries. What's the percentages of uh, compound movements to uh, accessory It's um, 20% barbell, 80% uh, small exercises. But we're going to get in, we still have to talk about jumps and uh, pull, pulling sleds. But it's all these small exercises, and we rotate them all the time. Um, the, you know what the law of accommodation is? If you do something repeatedly, you will get no better at it. You'll actually get worse at it. So what we do is our theory of training is to train as hard as you can on a, two or three exercises, as hard as you can, these space exercises. And a, for me, within three work, uh, uh, like we'll say, a, we'll say a, a Friday, a Monday, and a Friday, I want to switch because I can't get any more out of it. But I've trained them maximally. So I switched to three others that primarily work the same muscle group. 
like if we, we've got a standing leg curl in the gym, a lying leg curl in the gym, an inverse uh, a glute ham in the gym, an inverse curl which makes uh, a glute ham bench is obsolete. It's the greatest hamstring exercise I've ever seen. And um, so see, we, and then we have band curls and we have ankle curl, weight leg curls. We constantly switch. You never go down. That's why people get hurt. They do this freaking base. They think that base is going to work during the season. It will not. In two weeks, the greater athlete you are, the faster you use lose strength. They claim they lose 10% in two weeks. Don't do, uh, don't do timing exercises or speed exercises for two weeks, you lose them.